And we are live. Hello, test mic. One, two, hello. Mic check. Checks. Check. Test mic. Alright, I think we are all good now. Alright, so good morning once again to my uh, grade uh, 8 science class. Um, this marks the last topic for your fourth quarter and that is, no, uh, this will be the 12th topic, uh, uh, the, su uh, the sum of all the topics that we have for fourth quarter uh, is 12. So we have 12 topics and this is the 12th, the last topic. So after this discussion no, we'll be having your last activity and i believe that's it for the whole fourth quarter now, that's the reason why no for those who are i get to see that who are online in their social media but they ignore or they they snub their creeper uh, accounts no I, I think it's time for high time for you to Spend a little time in your in your learning, no. Aside from just trying to lurk or uh, what do you call this one? Um, just uh, watch somebody's profile in your social media. Um, I think this is a way for us to also continue to learn because then again, no, with the situation that we have right now, we will be leaning into this type of situation in the next school year. Now then again, I'll be lenient for the fourth quarter, no, because nobody wants and nobody likes uh, liked what hap what happened lately with this uh, crisis that we are you know, expecting. So today is uh, May uh, 12. It's uh, 6:43 in the morning. I just have finished my morning you know, morning routine, so uh, I decided to do this uh, lesson as early, no, for me to be able to. Uh, witness pa yung uh, the address of President Duterte this morning at around 8 o'clock uh, about uh, changes, no? the possibility of us being included in the GCQ and we and will be lifting there uh, the, the ECQ no? that we are experiencing right now. So, no, let's dive right right into uh, the um, lesson, no? So, in that case, no, we'll be talking about the last uh, topic, which is a genetic inheritance. I believe, no, that the last two topics were in we, which you tried to solve for a Punnett square was really a very, I think, difficult, no, in terms of trying to explain that one online. Though, I was really very, um, really very proud of one who, who messaged me in Facebook, no, trying to. Nakita ko kasi kasi nag-screenshot siya ng ng uh, video na pinanood niya yung video discussion or video lesson ko sa YouTube. And then again no, meron pala akong mali doon. And I was so amazed that she was able to see no the mistake that I've done and I stand corrected for that one. But among the many students no, she was the only one who who ko no, who tawag nito. Nag-PM sa akin. So ah uh, I appreciate those things that uh, that students do know whenever I have mistakes you just tell it to my face no um, PM me um, if you have problems in trying to log in with your account just PM me if you have problems uh, in trying to understand a certain topic just PM me I can spend time to exclusively explain that one to you uh, there are lots of people who are asking for my help uh, during this ECQ period uh, in terms of their subjects. But then again, I'm open to help. No, I, uh, I'm open to help students. So just PM me. No, kahit hindi tayo friends, I think uh, if you have common friends that we are connected, you can PM me. And most of the time, I'm online. 
Alright, so today no, we'll be talking about what you call your uh, genetic inheritance. And this genetic inheritance that we have, no, we already have discussed the, the, what, no, the, the Mendelian type of genetic inher inheritance. However, no, um, with the lack of what, no, time for us to be able to delve more about the non-Mendelian naman, no? Si nan, meron kasing non-Mendelian genetics din, which actually does not follow uh, uh, Gregor Mendel's uh, law of inheritance wherein no, hindi sila nagpa-follow ng law of dominance, they do not follow the law of independent assortment, they do not follow the law of segregation. Kasi meron din silang ibang law where different organisms also, uh, I think, follow follow the non mendelian genetics no not, not all not all follows the genet, uh, mendelian genetics so in this case now let's talk about your um, objectives at the end of the lesson you, you should be able to number 1 predict phenotypic expression of traits following simple patterns of inheritance identify traits that humans can inherit number 3 and then understand their effects on human health and number 4 know how they are inherited from parents to offspring um i still remember when i was in college you no know, when i was still ha having my uh my nursing degree at siliman university in dumaguete city negros oriental uh for us to be able to understand more our uh, the uh the patient that we have uh in the hospital where we are having our duty in the patient uh, patient under our care now we have a subject called pathophysiology wherein we we consume almost all uh the whole chalkboard no placing manila papers there and trying to trace no why does the patient experiencing this one what are the history of why this this patient is actually experiencing this one what are the treatments being done by the medical side what are the care done by the nursing side what are the uh the uh, regimens done by the pharmaceutical side i mean i mean it's actually collaborative uh Juan, no? collaborative uh effort that's the reason why today i was reminded of trying to Juan, no? trying to sing uh, ala oo oh, oh, ganito pala yung ginagawa namin dati and as early as uh, you know right now you are grade 8 uh, I'll try to relate the one that we had in college uh in uh, no? in uh, in a low uh tawag nito in an easier way of understanding so let's talk about what you call your heredity in the first uh first opening pa lang ng talking about genetics already i have uh, mentioned about heredity which is a process by which characters are passed on from parents to offspring so I think of something that you actually uh got from your mother you got from your father and during transmission half of the chromosomes are either maternal or paternal when you talk about maternal that the one that comes from your mother and paternal uh, the one that comes from your father that's the reason why you get to see here that traits are coded by genes can can be transmitted by offspring as i mentioned and emph emphasized many times before you're actually a hybrid of your mother and your father. 50% you got it from your mother and 50% you got it from the father. But then again, because of the Mendelian genetics telling us that there is dominance and recessive traits, no? hindi po lahat ng nakukuha nyo sa mother nyo lumalabas, na-express in your physicality. Not all that you got from your father also is being expressed or obvious doon sa physicality no? No, depende kung anong mga dominant doon sila yung lumalabas na at nakikita sa That's a reason why ah uh, medyo natatawa ako as early as yung mga newborn baby no. Na paglabas pa lang one day old na mga babies, sinasabi nila na mukha daw ni father, mukha daw ni mother, but at some point no, maaga pang i-distinguish na later on as the child develops no, ano kaya yung yung mas dominant sa child, nakuha niya ba yung ilong kini father niya, yung hair color ni mother niya, yung yung, yung style ng hair, kulot ba or straight ba or wavy ba, kanino niya nakuha, yung height later on, kanino niya nakuha. So those are different stuff that we get to uh, inherit from our parents. Right? Let's go now to the next. Genetic and heredity. So we have what you call your variations. When you talk about your variations at the bottom part of this um, bullet, no, you have what you call your continuous and discontinuous. When you talk about your variation, no, this is actually what you call your differences or uniqueness natin. No, na kahit magkakapatid tayo, hin meron tayo mga parts or meron tayo mga features sa sarili natin na hindi tayo kaparehas ng mga kapatid natin. Do sabihin natin kahit kambal, 
no? Nang magkamuka sila, especially for fraternal twins, na magkamuka sila, no? Do sabi natin, uy, halos magkamuka sila to the point that you are having hard time trying to distinguish who is who. However, if you're going to dive in into the geno- genotype or yung mga genes na doon, you get to see that then again, no? May differences pa rin sila sa genes, gene coding nila and to the point that even their thumb marks are not the same. Hindi po magkaparehas yung thumb marks ng mga kambal. Now, question, question nyo, sir, meron bang possibility or kailan ba po magkakaroon na talagang maparehas ko? Na talagang ako yung ako? Alright? The only time that you'll be having Uh, a phenotype that is actually just like you and at the same time the genotype the genes are also the same as like you is when you are being cloned cloning po lang ang isang paraan para um, yung ikaw talagang kaparehas ka tamark mo parehas now we have what you call when I was in high school and even in college we have uh, uh, some sort of mga discussions no about would you like to have a clone would you like to have an exact the same as you that is actually open in the society running the working and those different stuff well some others say yes and well some others say no no so always it has always an advantage and disadvantage now question is sir meron na bang nakapag clone ng tao So far that I can remember, wala pa. However, we have already cloned different organisms like sheep. No, The first clone sheep that we have was Dali the sheep. No, However, hindi po tumagal si Dali na matay din lang. But, no, it was a breakthrough in science that we are able to clone a sheep that is actually the same as the original one. Now, this was, I think, no, if you're going back also to the history, where in uh, there was this one dictator in uh, Germany no by the name of Adolf Hitler who was actually having though uh, an underground experimentation of trying to clone and even and uh, meron tayong tinatawag kasi DNA recombinant of trying to combine different genes of beautiful traits guapo malakas matangkad Uh, hindi sakitin, yung mga ganun, no? That is happening during those times, during the World War II, uh, World War II, World, World War I, World War II, I think, no? During the, those times na meron daw mga scientific experiments na tago dati. We're in, no? Pinapakita doon, or try as si, ang habol ni Adolf Hitler doon ay magkaroon ng super army. Mag-clone siya ng mga maraming tao na padamihin niya yan na lahat good genes, lahat na gwapo, yun na nga, sabi ko yung mga magagandang jin tapos paramihin na yun para maging mga sundalo niya. Super, super soldier. Uh, we can relate this one to a fictional movie of Captain America. If, you're watch, uh, if you have watched Captain America, no, he was a very skinny soldier that undergone many experiments to the point that he became so buff, big, with, with super strong, uh, super strong strength, mga ganitong mga bagay. I think if you're going to look at it, ganun yung habol ni Adolf Hitler na magkaroon siya ng maraming Captain America. Maybe kasi German siya. So, Captain Germany, parang ganun. Pero yun na yun. So, let's talk about your traits I can either be exhibit continuous or discontinuous. Then again, no? magkakaiba po tayo kapatid magkakaiba even parents magkakaiba even zebras no magkakaiba yan in terms of the stripe patterns hindi po sila magkakaparehas parehas din lang ng ating mga no fingerprints kaya nga for us to be able to have our own identity no kailangan punta ka sa NBI kuha ka ng NBI clearance, police clearance, kailangan may thumb mark. Kasi yung thumb mark, pwede nating maging database na ikaw lang yung merong ganong thumb mark. Pwede nating matrace agad kung sino ka. O, kasi wala kang kaparehas. Unless nga, pag merong clone, yun na yung sinasabi lang disadvantage of having clones. No? Because if you have clones that are actually moving in the society, marami, mer- meron kang 
kaparehas mo na parehas ka ng thumbmark, pwede niyang ma-access yung <laughs> yung bank accounts mo. Pwede din siyang magkaroon ng do parehas kayo ng ano, ng, ng 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 mga features do. Pero magkaiba kayo ng ng upbringing, no? Kasi upbringing naman it's more on the environment eh. Yung paano ka pinalaki. And to the point na siya pwede siyang maging criminal tapos ikaw ikaw yung mabait pero Yung sinasabi ng biology teacher ko when I was in high school, just like you know grade 8, uh, uh, one of those issues that you'll encounter when you have a clone is actually misidentity. Misidentification. Kasi, <laughs> kasi parehas nga kayo ng, ng mga features. Siya na criminal, ikaw na, ikaw na yung mabait, ikaw yung nakulong, kasi nga magkaparehas kayo, hindi na ngayon ma-distinguish kung sino yung isa. So yun nga. However, In the science realm also, clone can really be helpful especially no, if you get to encounter accidents or maybe mga terminal illness. Bakit? Kasi gusto lang nila yung clone nila, meron yan, living, pero ilalagay nila sa parang cryogenic na refrigerator. Yung sinasabi nilang very cold uh, gen, uh, refrigerator no? where in hu- buhay pa rin yung tao. Na. To the point na yung clone mo is actually kasi exactly the same as you. Pag sira yung heart mo, pwede mo patanggal yung heart mo, kunin mo yung heart ng clone mo kasi then again clone is actually your clone is actually the same as you in terms of your genes. Pwede mo lang na iswap yung uh, magandang heart na reserba mo, sira yung heart mo, eh gagamitin mo yung or any other body parts that you have damaged no along the years that you can get actually from your clone. Yun naman daw yung sinasabi lang advantage. Right? So, I hope that you get the point of why we are studying what you call your genetics. Because genetics is actually an, an, uh, a very new and advanced topic right now for biology. no? And ano ba habol din ng cloning? Sa cloning kasi, pwede nating mas pabilisin yung pagdami ng mga source ng pagkain natin. No? Pwede nating padamihin yung mga manok, yung mga... mga yung mga pigs no yung mga baka para meron tayong source of food kasi yung source of meat natin mga ganun no instead of having the the usual sexual reproduction pwede na kasing cloning yun yung habol naman nila daw uh, which with where they call uh, yung food supply no uh, at least hindi tayo maubusan ng food supply as the years go by na sinisira natin yung environment natin wala na tayong source eh, ito daw yung mga resort natin para mas magpadami at hindi tayo maubusan ng pagkain sa mundo I don't know, no. All right, let's talk about your your no? your discrete, your types of your traits. We have your discrete, your qualitative, and the one that is continuous, no. So, meron tayong discontinuous and continuous. This discontinuous is actually what you call your discrete or qualitative. Your quality, no. Trait exhibit variations that are observed distinct, distinctively. Sabi ko nga, yung differences talaga natin, very obvious. no? Flower color is an example of discontinuous trait. No? Wherein, we get to see here that, no, meron tayong rose, meron puting rose, merong red rose. Pero makita natin, still, it's still rose. No? So, we have what you call your mga distinctive qualities that are, makita natin talaga yung difference agad. Other than that, they say, not for human, an example is your earlobe attachment. Meron kasing mga human na yung earlobe natin. No? Ito. Normally, our earlobe, no? uh, in terms of anatomy, when you talk about your earlobe, this outer part of your eye is, should be in line with the upper portion or the attachment of your ears. But some human, no? meron pong mga lobes na mababa yung attachment, meron namang mataas, meron tayong big ears, meron tayong small ears, meron tayong palaylay na oracle, meron din tayong ears ng mga iba na diretsyo lang, wala itong laylay na ito. Um, that would make us distinct or different from others. So that, that's the one we call, we call our district, uh, discrete traits. However, when you talk about your continuous trait. This is what you call your quantitative. So then again, no, please distinguish. The first one that we have for your discrete or your discontinuous would be qualitative. However, for continuous, we call that one your quantitative. Exhibit variations that are continuously changed with a particular character. Ex- in, uh, ex- example with that one is actually your human height and skin color. 
sometimes we question where do we get our human height? Why is it that my parents are tall, but why is it that I am not? Why is it that they have straight hair, but where did I get my curly hair? Uh, skin color, no? Meron din tayong sinasabi na, oh, si mama maputi, si papa maputi, pero bakit ako hindi maputi? I mean, I'm, I'm morena or whatever that is. So, meron tayong mga pa- pabago-bago, no? Continuous variation. Nagbabago yan as the generations go by, no? Nagbabago-bago. So, sa parent generation iba, sa, sa first filial generation iba, sa second filial generation iba. Continuous po na nagbavary or nag-change yan. Parang hindi siya permanente na sure ka na na pag yung father, yung mother mo ganito, si father mo ganito, ganito ka na agad, no? Though, most of the time, it follows that way. Let's go na to the next. We have what you call your polygenic characters, those that are controlled by multiple genes. Kaya nga, when you talk about poly, it talks about multiple and genic uh, genes. So, multiple genes, no? Most polygenic characters also exhibit continuous variation. Just like your fingerprint is actually polygenic, no? Makikita natin, meron tayong different part, uh, kwa, no? meron tayong mga loop na, na patterns for fingerprints, meron tayong roll, no? meron din tayo yung circular, so ipa-iba-iba po yung kwa natin, hindi tayo makakaparehas. And what made it decide no, na ganito yung mga patterns is because it is controlled by multiple genes, hindi lang po isa. That's the reason why even your parents, and you have different fingerprints. I'll talk about no yung paano natin makita yung history, kung paan sino yung merong ganito, si Roy Magara. One thing that we we really are into what you call your genetics is for us to be able to trace whom did we get our traits or our characteristics. Kanino natin nakuha ito? Pati sakit po ano yung mga sakit diseases natin disorders natin are actually at some point genetically link no sino ba yung mayroong ganitong sakit at saan ko to nakuha no if you cannot find that one to your parents and try to at least go back in the history your generation baka meron po doon and in that way no meron tayong tinatawag na pedigree a pedigree is a pictorial representation of the transmission of traits in a family line Kaya, uh, if you get to still remember, no, there is what you call a brand of dog food named Pedigree. It's because, no, dogs, meron tayong mga dog, alright? Dogs sila. And dogs can interbreed. Pwede. Kasi dogs nga sila, no? And, at the same time, since they can interbreed, no, we have different breed ng dog. Meron tayong... Bulldog at Shih Tzu, no? Pag pinagbreed mo, ano tawag natin sa kanila? Meron tayong, meron akong na pinakanakitang weird na breed ng aso. Uh, it's a pug in a Shih Tzu. Weird talaga. Mukha ng pag buhok ng Shih Tzu. Parang ganun, no? Tapos ano pa, meron, may mga big dogs, uh, if Doberman, tapos i-breed mo ng ganitong dog. I mean, Anong labas nun, no? It's actually now a hybrid. Now, para malaman natin kung pure breed or hybrid or saan yung family or ano ba talaga, ilang percent siyang Labrador. 25% Labrador, eto 25% uh, uh, Ascal, tapos uh, meron tong 25% na ganitong breed ng aso, ganong breed ng aso. So, paano natin malalaman is what you call your pictorial representation of the transmission of trait in a family line called your pedigree. Now, in this case, you get to see now, this one, no? Lagay natin sa malaki, malaking ko, no? But in your pedigree, analysis is used to predict patterns and inheritance of traits. Pwede din po ito sa tao, no? And in this pedigree that you have, no, I will let you show that these are there are symbols that we get to follow. All right? Ito yung sinasabi ko ng ginagawa namin sa sa nursing namin dati. We're in, no? To try to understand the history of the patient. Kung saan niya nakuha yung ganitong sakit niya o bakit nagkakasakit siya ngayon ng ganito? Is it genetically linked that maybe we have a family history of uh, in the family that may be having the same you know, the same disease as the patient right now, parang ganun. So you get to see here that in this picture, alright, ipagilid ko kasi baka nandun yung picture ko. 
we have a symbol of this one. So these are your your original pet, yung pinaka original, no? So meron tayong ginet na tinatawag, pag merong slash diyan, forward slash. This is being namatay na lalaki. Yung lalaki pala square. Yung babae circle. Pag may slash yan, this is sila, meaning or meaning patay sila. Uh, pag naka-shade naman yung square, affected male ang tawag diyan. Pag naka-shade yung female, affected female yan. Pag walang shade, just the the square and the circle that is actually a blank no or hollow, uh, hindi sila affected or normal sila. So let's say for example, when you talk about high blood. Uh, sa high blood, no, sabi natin, ikaw, o oh, ikaw ito, lalaking may natamaan ng high blood. Hmm. Tapos ito yung asawa mo. no? Minsan, nagtaka ka, saan mo nakuha yung high blood mo? E si parents mo, wala namang high blood dito. E, ikaw ito. Ito, kapat, hindi mo asawa to pala. Sorry, kapatid mo, babae, ikaw ito. no? Dalawa kayong magkapatid. Ikaw at saka yung kapatid mong babae. But trying to look at here in your parent side, no? wala ka namang high blood. Wala kang high blood. Try mo punta doon sa, one mo, sa parents mo, wala naman silang high blood. Try mo bumalik doon sa lolo mo, wala naman silang high blood. However, we can expand this more and go backtrack no? and try to see where did we get. However, no, meron tayong mga genes dito in this, uh, in this generation, no, magkaka line dito, na meron sa kanila ay high blood. To the point that even if your parents doesn't have it, no, meron pa rin mga naiiwan na nakukuha natin. That's the reason why, no, etong original parent, walang high blood, pero meron silang dalawang anak na may high blood. Meron din silang dalawang anak na lalaki na wala. Lahat ng babae, walang high blood. So, parang ganito yung gamit po ng pedigree, no? Uh, it's an analysis of trying to see, you know, um, for you to keep, be able to to, you know, to relate this one more, this is some sort of like trying to know the family history, family tree, no? However, sakit yung yung kwa natin dito, sakit yung ina uh, ina analyze natin dito or mga traits, no? so ito sabi natin, ito si parents mo hindi matangkad pareha sila, pero ito matangkad yung mga nakashade, so paano para paano nang yari yun, no? All right, so let's continue, no? Here and dito yung sin inex kwan ko, inexplain ko. So symbols are used to pedigree. A line drawn between circle and kwan indicates a cross. I sorry. Hindi pala kwan, no? Hindi pala magkapatid yung andito. I'm sorry. Uh, I stand corrected. When you get to see that there is a line between a male and a female here, no? This is actually a cross, no? Hindi magkapatid, meaning nag-asawa. Asawa pala ito, asawa. So parents, asawa parents tag asawa so meron ganito ganito yung nangyari all right so yun sorry uh, i said corrected a line is drawn downwards indicates succeeding generation so meron tayo ito no mga different symbols you have your male female affected individuals mating so pag meron ganito mag-asawa yan pag ito no so ito mag-asawa tapos meron din ganito offspring and birth order number 1 are gen uh, unto our generations so offspring numbered 2, 1, and 2, 2. So, ito, 2, 1, ito, 2, 2. So, yung panganay, babae. Yung, yung pangalawa, yung bunso, lalaki. Tapos, ganito, tinatawag natin identical twins o yung magkakamukhang twins. Then, we have your non-identical twins. So, you get to see here in your pedigree that it's really very important, a really very useful tool for us to try to backtrack and try to know, no, where did we get our, one, our uh, mga traits. Now, in terms of your, using your, your your pedigree, we have two types of pedigree. We have your recessive on the left and you have your dominant on the right. Paano kasi naging recessive ito? Kasi sa original, sa, sa, no, sa first generation, kasi number one dito. So, first generation, no, wala pong affected doon sa kanila. So, more or less, nung uh, nag-anak, no, nag-mate ito, tapos nag-anak sila, bakit yung lalaki, isang lalaki, yung pangalawa, Meron ganitong trait. Tapos yung bunsong babae, meron namang ganitong trait. Eh, wala naman doon sa parents. That is what you call your recessive pedigree. However, in your dominant pedigree, obvious na isa sa parent doon, no, in this case, nasa right, has that characteristic or that trait. And 
it's not questionable that one of the boys there and one of the the bunso girl there is actually having the same trait as the one no by the mother here in the first generation nakikita doon sa second generation so si mother dito may dominant trait kaya nakita obvious doon sa mga anak niya si second na boy dito at saka si bunso na girl dito dito sa kabila kasi wala doon isa sa parent pero bakit merong ganun Alright? So, example of dominant and recessive traits in pedigrees. Um, the recessive pedigree is so obvious with the basketball player, uh, Jun Marfardo. No? Parents are short. However, no? recessive pedigree. However, doon sa generation ng magkakapatid nila, dalawa sila matangkad. Though, siya yung pedyo weird yung pagkatangkad. Kasi 6'10", tapos yung parents mo, hindi naman hanggang 5'5 lang. Si mother mo 54 ata, father niya, mother niya 54, si father niya 55. So, paano nagkaroon ng anak na 16? Kaya nandito na. Dito na nag-explain yung tinatawag nating recessive pedigree. All right, in genetic disorders, meron pa tayong mga sakit na nakukuha natin for genetic disorders. We have dominant genetic disorder, one copy of the gene for that disorder to manifest expression in condition. Meron din tinatawag nating recessive genetic disorder. Requires an individual to be homozygous for the gene to express in a condition. So let's say, for example, if you can still remember, we're in, in your Punnett square, we're using small letters, yun yung recessive na alil natin. Pag yun, recessive, meaning for example, when you talk about yellow color of the flower versus the red color. So yung red natin, capital R. Yung yellow natin na flower, small r. And in that case, no, small r, small r. Tinatawag natin doon homozygous na alil. And in that case, pag sabi natin sakit yung pagiging karoon ng yellow na color, eh, meron tayong tinatawag na recessive genetic disorder. Alright? So, only happens in homozygous. But usually for recessive kasi homozygous, homozygous talaga most of the time. An individual is said to be a carrier if he or she bears alleles for disorder but does not express it. Usually, ang mga carriers, babae. No? Because of their uh, uh, sex chromosome orientation. Alright? Alright. Ganito. Let's say for example, meron tayong pan. Puntahan natin yung pan square. Gawa tayo ng pan square dito. I hope I can explain this one well. Hmm? Ito yung na-enjoy ko sa genetics though. This is a really very hard topic for you to understand even in college. I have this one in my grad school, but it's really still hard for me to understand, no? But we can't do away with this one. is because this is uh, it's, it's, it's innovation, no? Pinaka latest. Right, so, so what is planet square? Alright. Pero kasi sabi natin. Sabihin natin Sabihin natin na uh, Paano ba? Explain ito Alright, may cancer Ito, sa so lalaki May cancer, so capital C Si babae naman uh, Tinatawag natin siya Na heterozygous kasi may capital and may small. So, itong babaeng ito, no? Kasi may capital and small siya, meron siyang cancer kasi may cap cancer gene siya. However, meron kasi siyang recessive na in that point, no, sa babae ganito para mas easier. Kasi yung ang chromosome ng lalaki is X, X, 'di ba? Sex chromosome. Ito nakalala ko na. Tapos isuperscript natin yung capital C. Sabi natin cancer 'yan. Sa sakali lang, no. Tapos si babae naman Eh sorry, si lalaki XY. Si babae naman XX, 'di ba? Tapos capital C at saka may small C diyan. Alright, So, itong babaeng ganito, tawag nito carrier siya. Kasi meron siyang capital C na 
mayroon siyang cancer gene pero dahil hindi ito parehas na kapital, small yung isa, hindi siya nag-express. O ending, wala din siyang cancer. Pero meron siyang cancer gene, pero hindi yung gene niya nandoon lang, pero hindi wala siyang cancer. So anong nangyayari dito? I try nating i-cross ito. We have your XX. So X capital uh, X capital C X capital C. So prescript natin 'yan. Tapos ito naman dito X. So ang, ang kon dito no, pag si fa, si father merong cancer, si mother is a carrier, ilan kayo yung chance ng magkaanak niya na magkakaroon ng cancer? 'Yun. Tapos ano yung gender na merong cancer? So to, tapos X C tapos X small C. So X capital C, X small C. Tapos, ikaw natin yan. Hmm, yan, para makita nyo yung di difference. Tapos, ito naman, X, capital C, Y, capital C. Tapos, ito naman, X, small C, tapos Y, sorry. Sma y, capital C. Tingnan lang natin yung actually yung X dyan. No? So, ang tanong, let's say for example, si father pure na may cancer, si mother, carrier siya. So, ilan kay father, ilan kina, uh, anak niya ang magka, merong cancer? Since may capital C dito, capital C dyan, tapos alam natin yung XX, sex chromosome is female, meron pong isang babaeng may cancer. Makita din po natin dito na si lalaki meron pong capital C. Sa lalaki kasi, hindi na magmatter kung ano yung letra ni Y. Wala, wala nang pake dyan. Kasi ngayon yun nga, no? mas madaling matamaan sa lalaki. Kasi, isa lang yung X niya. In this case, kasi may capital X na siya, meron ding lalaking merong cancer. So, merong isang babaeng may cancer, isang lalaking may cancer. Kasi lalaki ito, kasi XY, no? yung sex chromosome. Punta natin dito, meron tayong babae, XX. However, capital C, small c, ang etong babaeng ito, carrier. Wala siyang cancer kasi nga merong small letter dyan, pero carrier siya. May dinadala siyang gene na cancer. So, pwede siyang magkaasawa ulit later on, baka lalabas anak niya. Sa lalaki naman na ito, kasi nga hindi na natin pakian kung ano yung letter dyan ni, ni Y, meron tayong small letter si dyan, meaning wala tong cancer. So, ang question, ilan magkakaroon, ilan sa eh, parents na ito, merong, may cancer si lalaki, si mother carrier, ilan sa anak niya ang magkakaroon ng cancer, dalawa, 2 out of 4 or 50% meron pong magkakaroon ng chance na magka-cancer yung anak nila, isang babae isang lalaki kung magiging lalaki yan, tapos ito yung makuha niyang gene may cancer, itong babae pag kuha niya itong gene, walang cancer kaya, in this case kung ganito kayo ikaw, ikaw, yung, lalaki, yung asawa mo is ganito, tapos ikaw ito ito yung pagpapapray mo na sana walang cancer yung anak nyo, ito yung chance na so may 50-50 Right? So, yun po yung parang sinasabi natin mga genetic disorder. That's the reason why, if you're going to continue that one here, no? Meron tayong genetic disorder na autosomal at sex link. Autosomal kasi doon sa autosomes or yung pair, if you can still remember your your chromosomes, no? we have uh, we have 23 pairs and the first 22, 1 to 22 is an autosome or your body chromosomes and the 23rd pair is actually your sex chromosome. That's the reason why we have also what you call your sex link disorder. Meron tayong X link dominant, X link recessive, or Y link, no? So, ito na yung parang explanation dyan, no? Though I'm not going to explain that one anymore there kasi it will make you, that is something na parang ipanit square din natin ulit, no? Pero you need to, ano, it, it takes time for us to understand. So, punta tayo sa mga different na mga sakit na pwede nyo mahawa, no? makuha from your parents. Uh, there is what you call your ac achondroplasia, no? or this is simply what you call your mga short limb na mga tao, yung mga maliliit ngayon, yung mga legs nila, or ito yung mga pandak, yung mga midget. If you can still remember one of the Lannisters in... Nakalimutan uh, pangalan ni, Miss, uh, ni, ni Lannister doon sa kwan. Meron tayong uh, Lannister na nasa, ano, nasa uh, Game of Thrones, yung yung makulit na maliit na yun, na prince. Mm. Siya yung isang example ng mga ganun. No? Wherein, what you call 
ito yung dwarfism yung tawag dyan as a general no that occurs in one in every 25,000 individuals this is inherited as an autosomal dominant condition so let's say for example meron ka sa genes nyo sa family history nyo na meron king kamag-anak na ganito do wala man diretso sa parents mo nakuha yon no if you are direct, uh, if you have a link with that person chances are possible kasi nga meron sa genes nyo yan Another one would be what you call your polydactyly. When you talk about your polydactyly, no? ito yung mga extra na mga fingers sa kamay nyo. Normally, we have five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. However, some human actually possess an extra finger there. Some are moving, some are not. But most of them are not. So, yun, no? pang six. We call that one, pag sobrang ng five, no? having extra digits, or having extra fingers, or even in your toes, no? that is what you call your polydactyly. Alright, this is inherited as autosomal dominant condition. Try to look at in your, ano, in your family history if you have this one. Another would be hang Huntington's disease. No, this is something that is uh, complicated na disease. However, it's a neurodegenerative disease, meaning as the years go by, you know, your your neurons in your brain and even your spines no, will degenerate. Na mamatay, na sisira to the point na dito, no? Sabi dito, Huntington's disease resulted from mutation of a brain protein. Nagyayari dito, nag nagpa-paralyze ka, hindi na maayos yung pag-iisip pag mo, yung mga ganun. Because this is related to your brain, this is related to your uh, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system as a, ano, um, as a whole. Alright, so, nakukuha din natin to through autosomal uh, dominant conditions. Another one would be your albinism. Albinism, ito yung nagiging abnormal na puti. This doesn't only happen to human, but this also happens to uh, other uh, ano, other organisms, just like snake. If you get to see, there's, there's there are pythons that are white. Those are albino pythons. Uh, we have also fish that are white. No, Meron kasi kaming kwan dati, um, isda na shark. Yung mga malilit na shark na nalalagay namin sa kwan. Sa... Uh, sa aquarium, no? meron kami yung black shark, meron din kami yung albino yung puti. But in this case, get, I, I believe that you already have seen a person that has actually, uh, merong maling pigmentation, no? na puti yung buhok, puti yung kilay, puti, pati yung mata medyo puti, yung, yung mga balahibo puti, yung skin very puti, no? na, to the point na abnormal yung kulay ng pagkaputi niya. And that is what you call your albinism. So, this actually is because of the lacking of the pigmentation or sim simply what you call your melanin. Kulang sila ng melanin. Tapos, try to see in your history, no? in, your, in, your, in your family history, because this is actually an autosomal recessive condition. No? Ang, ang recessive kasi to the point na hindi obvious na nakukuha natin sa, wala doon sa parents natin, wala doon sa lolo natin, pero, if you're going to backtrack there, no, uy, Saan niya nakuha ito? Then again, because it's recessive. It's not expressed by the previous ones, no? Previous generation. Aside from that, nakukuha din natin itong tinatawag nating color blindness. However, this is related to your sex uh, sex link traits no? or sex link disorder. Uh, usually, ang uh, mga color blinds, kasi X link siya, lalaki po ang laging natatamaan. Alright? Bakit? In the X-link recessive condition, either recessive or dominant yan, ng X-link, no? Let's go back to this one. No? Si lalaki kasi XY. No? Pag X-link, yung sakit, kung yung isang X dyan, natamaan na, kahit ano pang condition ni Y dyan, pag yung X na isa dyan ni lalaki, ay may tama na. Sabi natin, color blindness, yung lalaki na yan, colorblind agad. But for females, swerte sila kasi in their ex, uh, hindi sila usually natatamaan at or never silang natatamaan for x link at types of mga disorder. Is that because, in this case, ito is a really very good example. Let's think of C as colorblindness, the capital. And the small letter C is no colorblindness. Sa babae kasi, pag isa sa X doon has the colorblindness gene and the other one has no color blindness gene, no? Sorry. Small, capit, uh, small letter C. Natatabunan ni small letter C si capital letter C dito. So, pag ito may tama, pero kasi may extra pa silang X dito sa last, no? Ito is a good gene. 
no color blindness. This one has color blindness, no, the capital one here. The other X saves the other X. The one defective X actually is being saved by the other good X. But for for males, no, but what if one of the X is actually damaged, the Y cannot save the X because then again they are totally different. Kaya usually, color blindness in this case, sex link and X link siya, lalaking halos natatamaan ng color blindness. Ano bang nangyayari sa color blindness? Punta natin dito. Ano bang mga kulay na pwedeng i-color blind ng mga tao? We have what you call your green and red. Um, they say that Mark Zuckerberg, uh, which is actually you know, yung may-ari nung CEO, in fact, one of the founders of uh, Facebook, is actually color blind with blue, I think, or... I'm not sure, no? I'm not really very sure with this one. Or, blue lang yung kaya niyang makita. Kaya in that case, kasi blue lang yung kaya niyang makita, blue din yung Facebook na website niya. Parang ganun. Now, we have a test, no? In this case, now we have what you call your Ichi, Ishihara test. Used to detect red-green color blindness. If you're going to look at this, this is combination of red-green. If you are able to see what number is in the middle, then... You can distinguish the color, then you are not colorblind. However, for some people, hindi nila ito ma-distinguish. Kasi then again, for them, they see this all as one color. Kasi nga, hindi nila kayang i-detect kung anong kulay namang ito, which is actually red, and hindi din nila kayang ma-detect kung an ito na green part. They see this one as one color, no? For colorblindness. However, I'd like to add, no? Actually, for... For your creeper, ito na yung last. Pero I'd like to add one of the common genetic disorders that is common siya eh. Um, nakikita mo siya for some people. There is what you call, uh, try natin no, i-access itong sinasabi nilang, punta tayo sa screen. Alright. So, we have what you call your Down syndrome or your trisomy 21. When you talk about trisomy 21, no? alam natin na yung chromosome natin has 23 pairs. 1 to 22 is actually your autosomes and the 23 is your sex chromosome. Don't forget that one. And we know that they are in pairs. So number 1, pare sila dalawa. So number 2, pare sila. Number 3, pare sila. But then in Down syndrome or your trisomy 21, yung pang 21, di ba dapat pair din yun? However, in this case po, si trisomy 21, from the word tri, naging tatlo si nila doon. So, tri na sila, hindi na sila pair. Trio na sila, kaya tinatawag natin yung trisomy 21. Yung nagka 20, 21 pairs, pair dapat na 21, na dalawa lang sila, yung pang 21, naging tatlo sila. In your Down syndrome, ang tawag natin dyan, or simply for the common terms, we call this one your mongolism. Yung tinatawag natin mongoloid. No? It says here that Down syndrome is a genetic disorder. It is also called trisomy 21. It includes certain birth defects, learning problems, and facial features. A child with Down syndrome may also have heart defects and problems with vision and hearing. How severe or mi mild these problems are varies from child to child. That's the reason why being as a teacher, no, it's really very hard for us to be able to encounter some students who are actually merong ganito. No? Kaya meron tayo tinatawag na SPED or special education. Down syndrome is one of the most common genetic birth defects. It affects 1 out of 800 babies. Adults with Down syndrome may live about 60 years, but this can vary. Some others die as early. What causes Down syndrome in a child? When a baby is conceived, normal egg cell and sperm cell split, uh, uh, start with 46 chromosome. Yun yung sinasabi ko. From 1 to 23, kasi nakapair sila 46 chromosome. Ngayon, in this trisomy 21, no, na, one, kasi nga yung, yung pang 23rd, at uh, 21, tatlo sila, instead of having 46 chromosome, kasi may addition kang 1, you have na what you call your 47 chromosome na which is actually abnormal for a human. Kaya, ob, makikita natin, if you mess up with chromosomes which contains your DNA, it will be really very obvious in your physical feature and even in your mental ability. No? Ayun. Kaya, sabi dito, egg and sperm then divide in half. The egg and sperm have 23 chromosomes each. 
When a sperm with 23 chromosomes fertilizes an egg with 23 chromosomes, the baby will then have a complete of 46 chromosomes. Normal yun. Half are from the father and half from the mother. But sometimes an error occurs because at some point, not all processes in the body are actually happening perfectly. When the 46 chromosomes are being divided in the half, egg cell and sperm cell may keep both copies of the chromosome number 21. Instead of split sila na, uh, yun, both, ano, nag-tendency, meron pang isang extra copy. That's the reason why you have three copies of your number 21 chromosome. That's the reason why we call this one your trisomy 21. Paano natin maiiwasan yung trisomy 21? If you'd like to ano, like to see a very pic, uh, a picture of this one, no? this is a really a very good picture of. I want to PM. Ito yung mga itsura na mga common na mga kwan, mga batang may trisomy 21, no? Familiar kayo yung mga ganito mga mukha, no? Mga ganito. So I think you have already have uh, experienced some people who actually look like this one and medyo re mentally retarded sila. I'm not sure if I am using the correct term. Ah uh, no no kasi let's let's erase it all. Mentally challenged sila, no? Hirap nilang mapaaral sa sa eskwelahan. But then again different po ah, meron po tayong tinatawag na bang mild severe cases, mild moderate and severe cases. Yung mga mild teachable pa. Yung mga moderate going to severe cases, ang hirap na pong turuan sila. What if someday pag lumakas sila at wala na yung mga parents sila, silang mag-aalaga sa kanila, kaya ba nilang mag-isa? So, ito po yung mga iniiwasan nating magkaroon. No? Especially if someday, someday you start a family, iniiwasan natin yung magkaroon ng ganito. Paano ba pwedeng mag-iwas ng ganito? Right. Kailan ba nagkakaroon ng malaking chance na magkakaroon ng ganito, yung Down Syndrome or your Trisomy 21? It is when... No, sabi dito, mother's age at her childbirth is only factor linked to the risk of having a baby's ah, uh, kano? Baby with Down syndrome. Yung mga babae po na yung papunta na ng menopausal stage, around mga 40 plus or 50, uh, the most is mga 50, no? 50, 60 yung medyo nagsa-stop na yung mga menstruation nila or papunta na sila ng menopausal stage, eh humahabol pa silang nabuntis. And in that case, because of what you call yung mga, these are already old sperm cell, ah, uh, old egg cell sa babae. Okay lang kasi sa lalaki kasi wal, uh, old, old males actually can still conceive, no? But for females, meron, meron kang limit lang. Hanggang, hanggang dito lang kayo na age pwedeng mga anak. Hindi na kayo pwedeng mga anak ng, ano, ng mga anak ng more than that. For females po, I just want to emphasize this one that there is a certain best age for you to be able to conceive or pwede kayong mabuntis. Not too early in your teenage years. Iniiwasan po natin yun because you are still a growing and uh, developing ba, uh, individual in terms of your your body. no. And not too old also that to the point na papunta ka na ng menopausal stage at malaki na yung chance mong magkaroon ng anak na mayroong Down syndrome. So, the one in between is actually a very nice years for you to be able to conceive. Around mga siguro 24, 20, 24 to 35, mga ganun, ano? Then, do not take risk already of having the old age saka nakahabol na gumawa pa ng last na anak. Because then again, no, it says here, the risk increases each year of age, especially after age 35. Hindi, mahirap na po magkaroon ng anak at around 35 and above. Kasi malaki na yung chance na magkaroon ng Down syndrome na sinasabi natin. But younger women are likely to have babies than older women. So most babies with Down syndrome are born when women are younger than 35. What are the symptoms of pan, Down syndrome? Ito na yun, eyes are slanted, small ears may fall, slightly over the top, uh, short neck, small nose, flattened bridge, those different stuff. But then again, no, this is genetically... A, a genetic disorder that I'd like to emphasize that if you get to mess up with your genes, it will be very obvious. If not obvious in your physicality, it may affect your mentality. Baka mentally challenge ka. Or, 
Meron din tayong tinatawag na isang genetically type of disease. Na I think this is the same as uh, the, the, the known scientist by the name of Stephen Hawking. Siya naman yung, hindi ko alam kung sakit yun, that is genetically linked. However, siya yung medyo abnormal yung body, but a very a genius one. So, sa physicality siya natamaan, pero sa mentality, a very genius one. So, parang ganun, no? That's the reason why the point is, if you get to mess up with your gene, it will really be affecting you. Now, let's go na to, ano, for us to end this uh, lesson. Balikan natin yung PowerPoint natin. Alright. Punta natin dito sa last. Uh, I think that will be only your key points, no? So, just get to read this one. You have your true or false here. Try to determine. Answer that one in your own. And here, no? You have ito yung mga gusto ko sa part ng ano, ng lesson natin. Challenge yourself. Height is an example of a variation that is affected by non-genetic disorders. What are some examples or genetic factors? What are some factors affect and how does how do this pers person affect persons, uh, how do this affect a person's height? Hindi po totally na namamana natin yung height. Pwede pa tayong tumangkad even our parents are not that tall. However, mas malaki pa rin yung influence ng gene genetics. However, pwede ding caused by your non-genetic factors. Ano kaya ang pwede? Isang answer dito would be your nutrition. If you are healthy from birth, and meron kasi mga pagkain na nakaka-affect, na nakakapagtaas. I mean, they can actually spurt your growth no, through your hormones in your body, especially your GH hormone or your growth hormones that will affect your pituitary glands that no, magbuga ng mga growth hormones. The more growth hormones that you have during your teenage years, your puberty years, bibinat ka, tatangkad ka. And some other, oh, so they say that exercise, healthy living, uh, your nutrition, the food that you get to eat, no? actually affects your height. That's the reason why for people who are actually mga malnourished, makikita naman eh. So aside from hindi po genes totally ang nagdedicate, but meron din tayong times na dahil yan sa mga paano tayo pinalaki you know, in terms of our health. So these are non-genetic factors that may affect also our but I think meron pa po if you're trying to if you're going to google this one try to google mga non-genetic factors affecting height marami po kayong makikita dyan alright so this will be the last lesson the 12 lesson for the fourth quarter this is why this is already the conclusion of the fourth quarter um, just to remind you that here in this uh, in this uh, crisis that we have right now hindi na po tayo magmi-meet wala na pong meeting uh, maybe you are you are just makokontakt na lang kayo through PM or online or through text from your advisors kung kumusta po yung uh, yung status nyo from first grading to fourth grading nyo kung pasado ba kayo hindi but the point is that no gawin nyo po tapusin nyo po yung lahat ng mga activities sa fourth quarter baka kasi yung fourth quarter nyo kung medyo tagilid kayo sa earlier quarters pwede niyang hilain yun and that the only way for you to be able to redeem yourself is trying to finish all the activities, in my case, for science or even for the other subjects no? or any other activities that is, that is given to you by your teachers. That's the reason why, you know, encourage you to please tapusin natin. In that case, pupunta kayo ng grade 9 and everybody happy. Alright? So, masanay na po tayo ng online na learning, blended learning po tayo. Because then again, sa sitwasyon natin ngayon, pupunta ng grade 9, parang ganito din lang. So at least hindi na po kayo mahihirapan mag-adjust. For us, so, we are really very very blessed because we are doing this one for the last two years already. And we have maximized this one during ECQ. So thank God for this one. So without further much ado, thank you very much for holding with me from um, the first topic until the 12th topic that we have here I, I I very much appreciate for those who are for those students who are trying to find ways no kasi pag gusto eh maraming paraan kasi still again medyo disappointed din ako some others are actually active sa Facebook pero wala eh 
hindi ko nakikita ng nag, nagbukas man lang ng ng kwan ng ng Kuiper account sila. So without further much ado, thank you very much for holding to me and uh, holding with me, no? From first to the last topic. And again, maybe continue this one that even if you go to the the next level, you continue this discipline. Thank you very much. And once again, good morning.